shirt off. I'll get all lubed up and stuff, and we'll have a little party. Like you we'll don't, joke a bit. You don't think you got exposed when you did your walk today? No, no. I had no. I had a mask on. I, had, I was lubed up with the antibody. I didn't touch anybody. Mm-hmm. I handed the check to the cashier six feet away. I had to reach out. Good thing right. I got a long arm. Got extended reach. But let's go to a man who understands reach and understands, you know, playing the positions and who's a five and who's a four. He knows I'm probably a, you know, a typical six-foot white shooting guard type of guy. Yeah. You know, guys who can shoot so they can play the game. Of course, he's P.J. Carlissimo. NBA college basketball guru. How are you, PJ? Excellent, brother. How are you? Good. We missed you down here in the restaurant. They got outsourced outdoor seating again now here down at the Lay Virtue here in South Philly. Boy, I, I, I miss it myself. I tell you, I'm. Uh, I was looking forward to being back there for the uh, for the playoffs and late in the season, but obviously uh, more important things have taken over. So I'm just hopeful now we can uh, get it together in Orlando. Now, are you you're going to go down there? Because, you know, that stuff hasn't been worked out yet. But I know a lot of the broadcasters are going to do it remotely. You know, TV's had... going down for sure, okay. uh, ESPN and ABC. Uh, I can't speak for Turner. I, I had heard Turner was not going for the regular season games, uh, you know, the eight games each team is going to play, but would be there for the playoffs. But I, I shouldn't say that because I, I heard that. Uh, ESPN and ABC are going to be there, TV. They're going in, uh, and I think we'll be there the entire time. We're still waiting for a radio decision. Uh, at one point, we thought it was Bristol. Lately, what we've been hearing is we are going to be in Orlando, but um, they, things are changing day to day. You you know how that works, Tone. Yeah, absolutely. Now, is, is it going to be John Martin or Beth Faber going down to Orlando with the crew? <laughs> It'll be Beth for sure, uh, and, and I'm not sure who else. Uh, Chief's in the same uh, – Chief and I are in the uh, age bracket of uh, Coach Popovich and some of the other coaches, but uh, hopefully we're gonna, we'll get clearance to be there. Now, you know, when he first mentioned it, Adam Silver, the commissioner, mentioned it about, you know, he, he didn't know whether he was going to allow the coaches to be near the bench with his teams, and, and then like 15 coaches spoke up and said, what? You know, how can you do that? And then he changed his I, mind, obviously. Yeah, I was surprised. That's what, I mean, I'm... I, I should do a uh, disclaimer. I'm a huge, not a, a big, I'm a huge Adam Silver fan. It's one of the few times I think he spoke um, before thinking it through. I think he was, you know, he got the question, and yeah. uh, I, I'm still hearing that the committee um, – or the council, whatever it is, the group of doctors and, and medical people, for both from the league and the various teams, are going to have the authority to say to people, um, it's not good for you to be here, for you and, and, or for you know, other people, you, your chance of uh, getting it and communicating it to somebody else. So I, I don't know, but I, I think that um, that was very atypical of Adam to kind of say that without having uh, done some homework and see what was going to happen and certainly uh, get some reaction for the coaches because there were, there were quick quick reactions right there from, from a lot of the coaches. And obviously they want to be there, and obviously they want to communicate with their teams, and it's going to be, it's going to be strange in an empty building. It's, it kind of – reminiscent of uh, old-time scrimmages in college when you used to be able to scrimmage one team. It was even a time early NBA when I first got in the league in the 90s where you could, uh, I think, play somebody, but it had to count as one of your eight preseason games. So uh, it's, it's going to be different. There's no question about that. And it's, it's different. I've been, I'm sure you've been watching the golf on TV also, um, watching things without uh, people there. But it Again, in a gym and in a team sport, I think it's going to be totally different. I think people will still love it um, if, if the NBA is able to, to make it happen. But you talk about something that is going to be completely, completely different than what we're used to, particularly in the playoffs. The great P.J. Carlissimo. And now, you know, Harry Mays, my partner here, you know, anytime he hears golf mentioned by any of the guests, he wants to know whether you can get him set up at some of the great tracks that you are a member of. <laughs> I tell you what, it, it's, I forget whose uh, quote it was. I think it was a president or uh, somebody said that they, they wouldn't want to belong to a club that had me as a member. But uh, That was I'm one of the Marx for, brothers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it was. For, for yeah. My, uh, my years in Jersey, I, I'm proud to say I'm still a member at Baltus Rawl. And when I was out in San Francisco, um, still boast uh, Olympic club. So I'm, I'm very fortunate. Uh, my game doesn't... 
uh, travel very well. It doesn't deserve to be on those two courses, but um, I, I still am a member. So Harry's there anytime he wants. Say, to Harry's man. eyes lit up. He heard Baltus draw wow. in the Olympic Club. PJ rolls thick, oh, man. Absolutely, man. <laughs> PJ Carlissimo, <Jesus>. man. <laughs> Seton Hall, they have statues there, and they won't tear them down. <laughs> Even his statues won't be torn down, man. <laughs> there, was, there was a time it would have come down very quickly, very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, PJ, I would love to get your thoughts on when, how, your reaction when they announced the format and the fact that, you know, 16, the top eight teams in each conference, but then they're going to add six more teams, five in the West that are within six games of the eighth seed and then the Wizards from the East to sort of finish out this regular season. I w wanted to get your thoughts on, on you know, how they, how they went about getting the, the teams to Orlando. You know, it's funny. I, I was against it. Uh, I mean, in terms of I heard the – ranged everywhere from uh, oh, let's only bring in the uh, the playoff teams and Michael Jordan allegedly and I, I said it only because I didn't hear it said that Michael was one of the, one of the ones that advocated only having the 16 teams that were already in the playoffs um, clearly because of all the challenges that are uh, involved in doing this you know they, they settled on 22 and they made it teams that were still within striking distance I I, I don't like eight teams not being there. I really don't. I would hate to be one of those teams. And I've been on both sides of it in the NBA when we had no chance and our season ended, you know, as it used to end April 20th and you were done until uh, the following September or October. But uh, I think it's really hard for those, for those teams to not be there. Uh, I, I understand why, but I would have preferred all 30 uh, or, just, or just 16, to be honest with you. Um, I'm just happy we're having basketball, to be honest with you. We're splitting hairs. It's, it's good to give teams an opportunity. Um, I, I just think the teams that were there – uh, when they were playing. You've, you've got some players coming back now. I'm really anxious to see tomorrow who the players are going to opt out, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, and, and choose not to be there. I hope it's not, not a very big segment at all, but um, I, I would have liked it uh, a little bit smaller, but I think they've made the best of a situation. It's a situation it's easy to, to second guess, and frankly, we don't know what it's going to be like. I mean, there's going to be three scrimmages when they get to Orlando. Each team is allowed three scrimmages, and then the eight, quote, regular season games, uh, and then the playoffs. I think the playoffs are going to be the most normal uh, of, the, of the situations right there. I just hope people can get back in shape. Uh, you know, three months is what, when I was lucky enough to be in San Antonio and be an assistant there, three months was about the time you had off from the end of the playoffs. You know, the playoffs usually go to the 15th, 20th of June. You'd be off three months and you'd start up again. And, I mean, it was a heck of a, you know, to try and get things back together. Um, it's not as long as the five months that the teams that don't make the playoffs, but it's really going to be a challenge for the coaches and the players um, to get into basketball shape. I mean, we're so used to doing games in October and November and saying, you know, even into December saying, hey, they're not in shape yet. It's going to take a little time. They're not in basketball ball shape they're not playing the way they need to be playing um they're going to be under the gun to get the, to get this together quick without even talking about you know the differences it's going to be the same for everybody but when, when you've got playoffs and there's really no such thing as a home court and they're playing in empty gyms um it, it's going to be unique hopefully a, a one-time situation it is the same for everybody but it's I really think it's going to be a challenge for the teams and the, uh, the, the coaches and the players to get into the kind of basketball shape that we're used to seeing come playoff time. We're talking with P.J. Carlissimo, ESPN radio analyst, longtime coach in the NBA and, of course, in college basketball as well. Trevor Arisa announced that he's not going to go to Miami with the Portland Trailblazers. I mean, they're, they're not going to make it. I mean, Damian Lillard earlier said he didn't want to go, and I don't know whether he changed. He did change his mind. We'll I think see. he changed his mind, yeah. yeah I, I think he changes my – I saw Davis Bertans. The only two that I saw, and there probably are others, with Davis Bertans, who used to be in uh, San Antonio. They actually lost him in one of those strange – I forget who the player was. They had a chance to get a pretty good player and had to free up some space, and that's why they let Bertans go. They didn't want to do that, and he ends up in Washington. He's a heck of a player, but he's, you know, he, he's announced already he's not going to go. Trevor's the only other one that I've seen. I'm anxious to see – What's going to happen with, you know, a, a Dwight Howard or an Avery Bradley? The guys that have been pretty outspoken um, ab about maybe not wanting to be there. But when, when, you know, we're going to find out tomorrow who, who the ones are that are going to be willing to forego the money, frankly, uh, for whatever their reasons are. 
Yeah, we know that uh, the J Jokic in uh, in Denver. He's still he's still overseas. He's not even in the country, and he tested positive. So will he be allowed to come back into the country with the Nuggets? Well, I think they they have to quarantine. They they wanted those play. They wanted the international players to come back earlier for obvious reasons to quarantine them in their own cities. This is a situation where it may very well be by the time he gets done with the quarantine, and then he's going to have to come over and quarantine again. I believe mm. when when he gets over here. But uh, you're talking so that's a player who has an impact. Uh, on the playoffs, yep. there's no question about Denver's. Denver's a good enough team, or they were uh, on March 11th. We'll see what, what it's going to be like when we get to Orlando. PJ Carlissimo, and another one we saw. We saw uh, Marcus Gasol. Did you see his body? What he went from to what he looks like now? The guy's lost a ton of weight. I, I did not. That's that's where Bryson DeChambeau got his. It was a, they just they moved it from one to the other there, so Harry could watch him hit the ball further. Right. Yeah, the golfers are getting bigger, and the NBA centers are getting smaller. <laughs> it's crazy. Hey, PJ, do you think, like, this is with, with all this strangeness going on and, you know, just the unique aspect of this, we could end up with an NBA champion where you're sitting there saying, hey, man, that team was a five seed. I had no idea that they, you know, in any normal year would they get past the second round. I think it's possible, but I still think when it's all said and done, uh, it's it's going to be about the talent, whether there's home court, not home court, who's going to be able to play. You, you mentioned there's going to be some players who now may be healthy and, and able to play that weren't even expected to be there. So you've got some different rosters, and obviously you have the possibility, you hate to say it, but you have the possibility, one, of injury, which always you know occurs. Think of the last couple playoffs with Kevin Durant and uh, Clay going down, Kyrie going down a couple years ago. Uh, I mean, a huge impact without even talking about whether anybody He's going to, you know, contract uh, the coronavirus. Whether that's how many guys are going to get knocked out with that, I still think it's going to be a worthy champion. Best of seven. That that's still the biggest difference to me. Uh, college and pros. I love the NCAA tournament, but other than a game seven, you never have that. Uh, you know, win or go home game. And uh, if you, if the teams play each other seven times the better team is normally going to win, and particularly when you've got a playoff situation where you've got to go through uh, four series. I think, the, I think it's going to be a worthy team. I don't think it's going to be somebody, um, for, you know, like a, a five seed. As deep as the West is, um, I don't see it. I'd like to say that what's Philly right now? What was Philly when it ended? I, you know, it would, to me it wouldn't be a shock a team like Philadelphia mm. because I think that's a team that, again, if Ben is healthy, uh, that's a team was, that was considered to be good enough to win it all along so um i think there's some teams a little bit lower in the standings than we than we might um normally say would have a chance to win it but uh, a lot of the i don't want to say all bets are off but a lot of the bets are going to be off with this starting all over and then we're going to get a real good indication even though it's only going to be eight games i think when we reshuffle them and when we start the playoffs um I think we're going to feel a little bit differently, but I'm still going to be shocked if anybody other than the Lakers or Milwaukee are not the favorites. PJ, I got a, a, a golf type question now from the people on the Twitch stream. They want to know why selection better at the Olympic Club or at Baltusrol? <laughs> That's a tough one. I, it hurts me because I live on the West Coast, but I'm going to say Baltusrol. Um, Baltusrol's been. And wow. Baltusrol also benefited in a strange way. They're, they're redoing the lower course right now. It's closed for all of 2020, and the upper is going to be closed for all of 2021. But uh, they had an unfortunate clubhouse fire, um, so they've just done everything. Uh, not completely. Clubhouse didn't burn to the ground, but they've really done on, done an awful lot. And the, the chef there does a fantastic job. Uh, I, I think it's a simpler situation because it's just it's a golf course. Right. Uh, it's right there. It's the one building. Olympic. You got the challenge. You got the downtown. Uh, venue and then you got out of lakeside so it's a little bit tougher to maintain i'm totally happy eating or drinking at either one but if you, <laughs> if you force me if you force me i'm going back to new jersey 
So did you get whacked with a big assessment then at Baltus Raw? No, no I'm, I'm a non-res member. I wouldn't be able to afford it. Uh, well, I got, you I, know, it's always radio, radio makes, so it's, uh, I only get a little bit of TV and a lot of radio. So well, I one of our fr- is a, a non-res member. Now, one of our good friends on, on Twitter, Joey Bonocco, says that there's good calamari in the grill at Baltus Raw, though. And oh, you nice. got to have good calamari for the table. You know how that works. It's it's very good, but again, I'm going to go with liver too. I mean, we got we got to you know. <laughs> Every time I walk by there and see the uh, the owner, he says, "When's PJ coming back?" I said, "When you open it up?" And they just opened up like two weekends ago, but it's outdoor dining only. And unfortunately, next time you're in Philly, you got to come. We got to go back. PJ, down. this is Robin. I think that that's the longest t- uh, dinner that we've had in years. Just yeah. sitting. Rob, around. it was great, and we're going to do it again <laughs> shortly. I hope. <laughs> well, we're going green on Friday. Yes, we so are. We're going to be allowed to. Yeah. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> I think more stuff's going to open. I mean, that's what it means. 